So we're going to look at core competency uh, two, uh, which is detecting some of the barriers to committed action and sort of bringing them into the process and finding ways to sort of carry those forward with you as part of a pattern of committed action. Next clip, we'll be working with a client who is having relationship problems. Not so much active problems in the relationship. The problem is, is having a hard time getting close to uh, uh, people in uh, her relationships. And she has a past history of uh, having been betrayed. She's afraid that she's going to be hurt again. So when that choice point comes and mm -hmm. there's a way of sort of stepping forward with your boyfriend or back, what's inside? I have that sense that you kind of step back a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, like what's happening there? Well, I guess just old stuff starts to come up and, you know, I'm an independent person. I have my routines that I do and, and, and when someone starts moving in on that I get really nervous okay and is it some is there another level down there it's it's not just that it's your routine is disrupting yeah but like if you kind of go for what is there sort of it's harder to see it may be more emotional is there something in there as you step forward what do you what do you start feeling well um I guess I I don't really like people to see me be vulnerable yeah. because I don't want to get hurt again and okay. um, my past relationship I, I really haven't had anything serious since then okay. because I was open and and you got slammed yeah you got slammed hard yeah so he betrayed you yeah so I just and it, but no, don't, don't run off from okay. that sort of come back to that mm-hmm because I sort of get that in, as, as you touch that, mm -hmm. that there's this part that goes, yeah. I'm not going there and I'm not going here with this boyfriend who has not betrayed you. has yeah. actually been pretty good to you. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard. Right. Well, what if it's kind of like, like this? I mean, like, if we just put here, mm -hmm. you know, vul vul vulnerability actually comes from a, a root word that means woundable that you can be hurt, the, the Greek vuln. Huh. When people get close to you, they can hurt you. Yeah. Yes? Okay, so put it's kind of like this. Here's this past hurt. Uh-huh. But on the other side of that, there's something. Like inside, when you were betrayed, why did that hurt so much? Or sort of what's inside that? Isn't it because you really wanted something? You, were, you thought you had something. Yeah. And what did you have? Love. Okay. So here's, and do you, and is that important to you? Well, yeah, love is important. Uh, see, even as you say that, you know, because part of you is going to want to say, Yeah. But I'm not going to be so vulnerable again. Right. You with me on this? Yeah. Because I could hear it in your voice. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the other side is something that you really want, but you're afraid to want. And it's yeah. this one. Okay, so suppose we've got, so here we've got her, mm -hmm. here we've got love. Mm -hmm. You can throw this away, here, you can throw it away. Okay. But if you throw it away, like to get, to defend yourself against the hurt, you've got to throw away both sides. Yeah. Is what? it worth it? I mean, you, do you really want to have your life being thro thrown away both sides? Not, not both. Okay. Don't you think, can you see that some of what you're doing as you detune this? Yeah. It isn't just that you're more protected from hurt. Mm -hmm. What's happening on the other side? I just don't want to go there again. Yeah, which means you can't really experience. Love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that hurts too. That hurts in a different way. Yeah. When you encounter barriers to committed action, very often the barriers that come up 
are ones of pain and people are reluctant to move forward because of this sense of pain. In other words, avoidance is one of the barriers. What we just did there was sort of pointing out that pain can be a guide. Pain indicates two things. Yes, you've had things that have hurt, but you also have cared. If you didn't care, the things would not hurt. And so, ironically, uh, as you avoid, you have to avoid not just your hurts, but also what it is you really care about, what you really want. And so we were looping up from the barrier and having it be part of a pattern of committed action rather than an indication that she can't go in this direction. And so I kind of have a sense that you're holding your boyfriend at bay a little bit. Mm -hmm. You take one step forward and then one or two steps back. Am I, am I wrong in that? No. What's going on when that sort of choice point of moving forward or back comes up? What's going on there? Well, whenever I start to feel closer to him, I get, you know, that reminder about if it gets any better, it can only get worse. Okay. And I get nervous about being vulnerable. Okay. So there's sort of a pull to what, defend yourself or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's scary. Okay. And what do you think it's going to take to move you forward? I mean, if you just sort of, there's a, a Mom's Mabley one. If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. Mm -hmm. So is, you know, this, this pattern that you're looking at, as you back up and back up, I mean, what's it going to take to, to move you forward? Trust. Okay. But you've been waiting for that a long time. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so just behaviorally, like, what are you not doing with your boyfriend that you ought to be doing? I don't, I just feel like, even just when we're at home watching a movie, that I'm not really there. Okay. And I feel, yeah, I just, I can't be present fully. Okay. And because you're not present, like what, how, how, what do I see on the outside? Well, how, how would I, if I was there well, watching it, what would I see that's... Um, like maybe I'll have an impulse to, you know, sit closer. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, this feels nice. Uh-oh, if this feels nice, okay. then... Well, maybe we should target that. I mean, just sitting closer to him. I mean, why don't? Because if if we don't move forward, we're moving backwards. Yeah. That's my sense. I mean, uh, right. I mean, what is your value anyway? I mean, do you do you value being close to him? You're gonna have to sit closer to him if you do. If you yeah. sit way over there, you know, he's not gonna know that you. No, I know. Yeah, of co I mean, of course, I value that. I just I feel like I'm watching from the outside all the time. Well, maybe we should sort of set a goal in here of. Uh, you're sitting closer to him. Let's just, let's just do it. Okay. But I'm still going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, that's part of the cost, I guess. There's some things in here that could be helpful if they're put in the right context. There's nothing wrong with having specific behavioral goals. There's nothing wrong with pointing to the costs of inaction. But there's a crude quality to what's going on here. There's a missed opportunity. The barriers that are coming up here are barriers that have to be brought into the work, not simply dismissed, put off to the side, and then push on as if it's just a matter of getting the form going and then these other problems will somehow resolve themselves. That's unlikely. And so uh, because of that, although it has some superficial connection with uh, an ACT model, it's not a very uh, sophisticated uh, implementation of it.